Hello good learners, welcome to the first section of this course where you will learn about the basics of bash scripting. Now the most obvious question which would come up in your mind is what is bash scripting? To answer this in simple terms, bash scripting is a process of writing and running bash scripts which are basically text files having the file extension of .sh. Basically, bash scripting is an entire process of automating tasks. In the next section, I would like to talk about the basics of bash scripting. For your knowledge, programmers use the born again shell in short bash programming language or bash scripting. The born again shell bash was introduced after the Unix born shell. And interestingly, both of them are compatible shell types. Also, for your further knowledge, in a bash script, you can write different types of commands, starting from system commands, shell built in commands, and external commands. Another question which can strike in your mind is why do we need bash scripting? To answer this simply, bash scripting is mostly used for task automation, network or server administration and operating system administration. It has a variety of other applications which I will cover in the next section. As you already know, bash scripting is commonly used for task automation let me tell you some of the other applications too. This image depicts the other applications of bash scripting, starting from system administration, meaning operating system administration, to software development, also network management and server management, to task scheduling and log analysis and parsing. It doesn't stop there, right? Bash scripting can also be used in research purposes and system integration issues. It is also important to understand how could you identify a bash script. Now, bash scripts usually have a file extension of .sh. However, it is not a restriction to do so. Now, I will talk about naming conventions of bash scripts in later videos. Bash scripts start with the shebang line that is the bean bash statement representing the image at the top right. Next, you have the script contents including the commands or the set of instructions and functions you want to define. Lastly, the most important step is to provide the executable permission. To run or execute a script, you need to provide or add the executable file permission to the script. In this section, I would like to talk about the components or the core components of a bash script. Bash scripts include bash variables or variables which are like a container or storage medium to store values of different data types like integer value, floating point value, boolean value, and etc. It also includes control structures like conditional statements and loop structures. A bash script can also have bash functions which a user can define to execute specific task. Another important component is input output redirection to control the flow of a process. Last but not the least, you can also handle errors to make your codes better. Another important point I would like to cover is how bash scripting actually works. For your knowledge, bash is an interpreter language. Here, the interpreter or the bash interpreter to be specific converts the high level coding or our bash script codes to machine codes to be understood by your computer. Now this compiled or interpreted code becomes a blob or a chunk of binary data. This blob of binary data can be understandable by the computer or your machine. It is also important to remember that the bash interpreter has an important role to play during the execution of bash script. In this section, I would like to talk about the core features of bash. Starting with, bash is sh compatible, meaning it is compatible with the sh shell. For your information, bash is originated from the Unix born shell, in short the sh shell. Next, 
It has customizable key bindings. That is, Bash allows users to define their own key shortcuts, which will make Bash scripting much more efficient for multitasking. Thirdly, Bash scripting allows low control and conditional execution. Bash scripts include conditional statements or conditional execution of commands if you use conditional statements. Also, it allows loops to perform repetitive iteration and execute repetitive tasks. It also uses a directory stack which can keep track of recently executed commands. The stack operates using the commands pushd and popd, also dirs. Bash can also operate in restricted mode. This mode is used for security purposes and encryption purposes. You can execute the restricted mode using the rbash or bash double dash restricted command. Interestingly, it also allows versatile invocation, which is, it allows both single character and multi-character or longer versions of the command options. Last but not the least, Bash allows the use of associative arrays, which are one-dimensional storage to store a list or collection of data. In this section, I would like to talk about some of the additional features of Bash. Obviously, Bash allows command line editing, meaning it allows a set of key bindings or changing keyboard shortcuts for efficient command line interface editing. Also, Bash allows efficient cursor movement for file navigation, editing, and searching capabilities. Next, Bash allows wildcard expansion. Now, wildcard characters are a set of pattern matching or file matching characters. For example, asterisk, question mark, curly braces, exclamation, etc. An important feature is the command substitution, which is a dollar sign and parenthesis. We use command substitution by using the dollar sign and parenthesis. Using command substitution, you can output one command used for an argument for the next command. Also, Bash allows variable and parameter expansion. That is, you can use variables within commands written in Bash script. Also, you can manipulate and transform variables by adding prefixes or suffixes which will make the parameter expand. Another important feature is job control or process control. This allows users or programmers to control multiple processes which can be synchronous or asynchronous. The next feature is input or output redirection. Now, this is a very interesting feature which can Control the flow of process. Using input or output redirection, you can redirect standard input, standard output, and also standard error streams to or from files or other processes. Last but not the least, Bash has also extreme scripting capabilities for task automation and various other purposes. So, that was all about the introduction to Bash scripting. We will know more interesting aspects of Bash scripting in the next part.